hard to be balanced in this kind of time because the conflict and the war is so damaging and it's so negative. However, we don't want to inflame situations so much where we think the world is going to end. How are investors tackling this so-called safety trade, if you will, and is it worthwhile for them to look further into it? Well, John, uh, geopolitics is always a risk for investors, and this risk has escalated with the attack on uh, Israel uh, over the last couple of days. And we might see the volatility in the stock markets. We might see volatility in the oil uh, markets. And while investors are figuring out exactly how to handle these risks, we're already seeing uptick in the bond market as a flight to safety. And this is a reminder to us that geopolitical risks, as unpredictable as they might be, you know, we need to prepare for them. We need to think ahead and position our portfolios defensively. And this is a, definitely a case for diversification and protection of the portfolios. Now, good thing is that we do have a benefit of the high interest rate environment. So for investors that do feel extremely uncomfortable about this market, you know, one of the short-term solutions over the next 12 months would be cash, would be fixed income, would be private credit, because they can actually get significant yields in those areas. But of course, we don't want to confuse the short-term solution with the long-term portfolio positioning, you know, as we have to think long-term, you know, and make sure that we are taking advantage of the, some of the opportunities that this market presents. Okay, Katerina, I also want to welcome in Bleakley Group's Peter Bookvar. He's here on set with us right now uh, to talk a little bit more and add his insights as well. Peter, this is a scenario right now where, as Katerina points out, the rising rate environment has created a very different level of bond prices, especially for U.S. Treasuries, which are still viewed as the safe haven of choice for many people in times of real stress. Is this, though, a time where that safety trade does present more attractively, given the fact that 10-year note yields are pushing that 45 to 5% realm? I think temporarily. Uh, bonds certainly have gotten oversold over the past month, treasuries, uh, longer-term treasuries specifying. So there was a reason to get a bounce in price and a dip in yields. And while the cash market's not trading today, you're seeing the futures uh, treasury market rally, so you should see a, a decline in yields. But it's how sustainable is the question. I think short-term treasuries, because the Fed is basically done raising interest rates, well, that's the real safe haven because I think you've You've taken away the risk of short-term interest rates continuing to rise. It's the longer-end yield curve that I think is part of the yield curve that I think is more at risk to see, notwithstanding a short-term rally in bonds, but a longer-term sell-off in treasuries that gets even higher yields potentially. Peter, this is a scenario right now where rising oil prices directly tied to what's happening in Israel and Gaza is coming at a tough time for the American consumer. Inflationary threats were already there. People have already been feeling it for a while. Is this a scenario where the U.S. consumer is going to get hurt even more entering that all-important shopping season that's critical for the American economy as well? So it's definitely going to potentially extend out the inflation squeeze that they've been under. Over the last three years, CPI is up almost 20 percent. And just when we thought we were going to get some relief, with the slowdown in the rate of change, this persistently high oil price uh, is going to complicate that factor, not just for the consumer, but certainly for the Fed in running monetary policy. We talk about higher for longer interest rates. I think we're learning over the weekend we're going to have higher for longer energy prices as well, with the risk of much higher prices relative to the potential downside. And Katerina, from an investment standpoint, you talked about the safety trade before. Investing or buying bonds, whether they be treasury variety, investment grade corporate, high yield corporate, it's different than investing in precious metals, right? Because bonds spin off income. Gold does not. You hold it because you just hope it goes up in price. What's the strategy? What kind of safety trade is the most attractive to you right now? 
Well, Dom, absolutely. And there are two sides to this question. You know, one are existing fixed income portfolios, and investors actually are seeing declines in values of their treasuries, mortgage backed securities, a high yield held up, you know, significantly better than that. You know, so our recommendation there would be to consider tax loss harvesting and taking advantage, you know, of this current environment. But also the other side of this trade is the fact that we are at historic high interest rate environment. Environment. And at this point, buying treasuries, buying specifically investment-grade corporates would allow investors to extend the duration of the rates.